We come now to the last lecture for uh, week two, and that is going to be now from expulsion to Babel or from Genesis 4 to Genesis 11. Now I'll give you a brief narrative of what unfolds just to give you a sense of what the account is here. Uh, after Adam and Eve, of course, are expelled from the garden, then they have children. We don't know how many, but Cain and Abel are going to come to the forefront. So what's going to happen here is um, they are going to come and give a sacrifice. Now, the question is, are they going to do a sacrifice in accordance with God's will? You say, but he hasn't said, he hasn't said anything of what he wants. Um, it was demonstrated in the last chapter that uh, Adam and Eve were made righteous before God through the, through the coat of skin or the death of another. So Cain and Abel, uh, Cain works with, uh, with vegetation, Abel is going to work with animals, and so... Cain brings uh, fruits and many or, or vegetables or whatever to the sacrifice and people usually interpret it to mean that either one he were he brought the worst that, that he had or two he had bad intentions uh, we'll, we'll look at that and then Abel brought up a, a, a lamb without defect and so on and so Abel's sacrifice was accepted but the one by Cain was rejected so what you have here is a process of there are not going to be three callbacks. There are going to be six callbacks uh, for Cain. So the Lord is being, the Lord God is being more long suffering with him, yet he is going to harden. So God says, uh, why are you downcast? Same question, right? Uh, what are you? What are you thinking? What's your, what, what is your problem at this time? And, and Cain is going to, uh, uh, and then the Lord says, uh, um, if you do what is right, will you not be rewarded? That, that's the proper connection. It's, you did something wrong, Cain. What was it? And Cain, rather than repenting, he hardens himself, and then he invites his brother into the field and, sli and, and slew him, um, kill him. And now you have injury added to that and the death of your brother. And then when the Lord confesses, uh, confronts him, uh, Cain is going to say, am I my brother's keeper? Is this my problem? Why are you asking me? And so what you have there is uh, there's no death penalty yet instituted. Cain is uh, indifferent to, towards what he's being taught. And he just hardens himself, um, does not take responsibility, and moves on to start its own city uh, where people begin to live. And... Cain is going to be notorious because he's going to engage in uh, developing the work of uh, dominion that was given to Adam and Eve first. So that, that happens. And then Lamech, who is in the line of Cain, is going to be the first person uh, to introduce, um, you have sex and violence and murder more specifically. So keep that in mind. Sex and violence are going to be constantly connected throughout all of these monotheistic religions as a source of much grief to mankind. So he becomes polygamous, um, and then he uh, engages in the development of cities, but then he ends up killing someone because he insulted um, Lamech, and Lamech is unrepented by that. And so now you have the introduction of sex and violence into the equation, and supposedly 120 years later, given that the violence was so high, and the rampant um, immorality was so great that there was only everything was reduced to one family. And I put a chronolog chronology for you guys uh, so you can follow along. Um, and what you have here is that uh, Noah comes into the picture. Now, Noah is going to be a character who is going to preserve all of the work that mankind has done up to that point and bring it across. To the other side of the flood so noah uh, his name is uh, he who delivers us from the work of our hands so what that means is that noah was not just this uh, nobody coming to uh, hear voices but noah was equipped to bring forth the work that was accomplished before into after the flood and so god tells noah that i will not contend with mankind uh, any longer than 120 years. And so uh, uh, Noah builds the ark in the midst of, of course, being made fun of and seen as ludicrous. And then he is going to preserve him and three of his children married to three other uh, 
ladies so you have eight people who are going to repopulate and uh, lay out the earth and so what happens there it is um, let me see uh, what, what's going to happen with the, the flood as it comes uh, a little bit later is that it was preceded by intermarriage uh, so that is Genesis 5 when the sons of God saw the daughters of men and they uh, they thought that they were uh, beautiful and they married them now what this means is the sons of God are just those who are believers those who are connected with uh, Seth and Adam and Abel and those who were good and then they looked at women and then they lost it after them and then the Lord says I, my, my, my soul will not contend with them for uh, 120 years so within 100 years the flood occurred at this time in Genesis 5 and then apostasy if you continue to read Genesis 5 then on verses 4 and 5 what you have there is uh, human beings thoughts are evil at all times and they are just engaged in wickedness and depravity all day long. And so at this point, the Lord is now going to cut them off. And this is where Noah comes into the picture. If you look, he is going to provide rest and he's going to preserve. Um, and then the flood comes into the scene. This is, this is uh, thought to be a worldwide flood uh, that brought about the death of everything that was outside of the ark besides some birds and fish. And there are going to be some changes that are going to take place. One is that human beings will no longer live as long as they did before. If a, if a Hitler or Mussolini got to live 900 years, imagine how much suffering and misery they would have inflicted on mankind. So now human beings' uh, lifespan is reduced to 70 or 80 years. Uh, animals are given, uh, are given for food because farming is going to become very difficult after the flood. And so for one to be able to sustain oneself, that's going to be needed. Then there are going to be geological changes that are going to take place. And then, of course, capital punishment is instituted. Now, capital punishment is a further restraining of a human being's inclination to do that which is sinful. And so if you kill another life, then your life shall be taken, period. Um, and that may help you stack, stop and think. And so now you have, uh, after God gives this promise and reestablishes re the promise that he gave to Adam, uh, he is going to now give a sign that this, he will never do this again. And that is the rainbow uh, that is used for that. And then you have, uh, of course, Noah and his sons who survive in Genesis chapter 9. And what they do is uh, they will leave and spread and they will bring civilization with them and they will be mighty men who uh, spread this knowledge. Uh, and, and then after the flood, then I believe a few hundred years later, what you have then is Babel. Now Babel, uh, mankind comes together and they live together again. And then they want to prevent another flood from uh, causing havoc. And so they want to build a tower to the skies. So what that means is <coughs> they are united, all of mankind, and they are united in wickedness. And their plan is to somehow stop God from, um, stop God from intervening and possibly hindering their plans. They all speak one language. And so now the Lord said, I will never allow the earth to be filled with, with uh, wickedness again. And so he realized that uh, if these human beings were to be left to themselves, they would go back to uh, debauchery and, and apostasy. And then what you have is uh, the earth will be filled with suffering again and wickedness. And so he prevents that. And the way he does that is by uh, scattering man, uh, mankind through the earth and by confusing their languages. And so from what we know of history... Uh, part of the great divide among human beings has to do with language. Uh, human beings don't tend to trust as readily those people whom they don't understand. And so uh, the United States has an, pretty much an open border towards Canada, but then towards the south, and they, then there is this idea of uh, separation. That has happened throughout history in many ways. 
And so now there's an increase of the curse. Not only do you have to deal with the sin of yourself and the sin of others, you have to deal with the division that a lack of language is going to provide. Uh, remember, it's taken all of this in human history to arrive at English as a universal language. And even then, maybe 20% of the world population speaks English. Uh, but that is it. And so what you have here was a narrative of what was to unfold until Genesis 11. And we'll stop there for this week. And we'll pick up there when we go into Judaism uh, for you guys to see how the narrative continues. But do not... Uh, forget about the basic principles on the five points of creation, five points of the fall, five points of redemption, and the role that suffering is going to play in human life. And that is, uh, it is going to be a means of stopping and thinking and calling people back to repentance. So I'm going to stop here and then we'll continue on um, with week three, uh, going over Hinduism next, next time. But we'll stop here for week two. So please make sure to uh, take notes on the lectures. Uh, make sure to answer the question that I'll post for you and and then uh, submit those to me and I will get you the links through Canvas and my email. Bye.